Hey everyone, we need to talk. I haven't been completely honest with all of you folks because there are things in my life that I firmly believe you keep to yourself. Uh, things that maybe in the past I have shared too much of. Um, one mistake I feel like I have made at this channel over the past two years, maybe the biggest mistakes I've ever made, is involving my children in any discussions on this channel, involving my fiance, involving my personal life, be it finances, be it related to things like um, <laughs> job loss. I guess that was, that, that was a big thing that started off this year. Uh, be it related to things like my relationship or my children's well-being or um, anything that involves that stuff that's not just me. Like if I'm sick and I talk about being sick, if I'm depressed and I talk about being depressed, I'm not depressed, by the way. Shout out to Wood. Be sure to check out uh, Beat Em Up's channel on Monday. He's actually doing a charity live stream, uh, I believe, Monday evening uh, to support um, a bunch of depression related causes, which I have a lot of personal experience with, which again, I probably shouldn't have talked about either because my experiences with it are less of my own, although I've had it before and more so talking about what I deal with in terms of my fiance or even Eric, you know, the co-host of the Nintendo Prime podcast. I need to clarify a few things here uh, just because I can't help but pay attention to negativity. Um, it is a character flaw of mine that's probably going to eat away at me as long as I maintain myself as a YouTuber and some sort of public person. Uh, my face is on this video. It's all over my channel and social media profiles. Like I think I, I posted a picture of me right after my, my first workout on my 90-day weight loss plan. Um, and uh, I do some of these things in part because it helps motivate me, right? So in the past, um, I've done things on live streams like... Uh, where, you know, do a dollar per push-up, a dollar per sit-up or whatever, and that just helped motivate me to get healthier. But obviously, uh, in the grand scheme, that's only going to get you so far. And there are people that don't like the fact that, oh, we're paying you to work out. Let me um, just kind of clarify a few things here because we are going to E3 this year. Eric and myself are going to E3. Regardless of anything else that happens, any drama, any silliness, because I hate silliness and I hate drama. Uh, there's a reason that I don't cover a lot of drama topics on my channel because I don't really like it. Uh, but that being said, this is about me, this is about the channel, this is about the future of the channel, and I need to address it. So first off, we are going to E3. And no, I don't need your money to go to E3. I know I did that live stream, um, and I feel like I need to make this video in response maybe to myself because I was eating during that live stream and maybe things weren't 100% clear. Uh, but reality is I don't need anyone's money to go to E3. And if I take out a business loan to pay for my trip to E3, it's none of your guys' business if I take out that loan or not, right? It's got nothing to do with you. Um, if I take out a business loan to go to E3, guess who has to pay it back? This guy. You're not going to see me making a live stream talking about how I can't make my loan payments. No, that is not something that's ever existed. Um, that's not something I've ever done. I don't think I've ever had a single live stream where I said, pay my bills. Um, I, I'm not, maybe someone can call me out on that. Maybe you'll find a video clip somewhere, but I am like 99% sure I've never said anywhere, I want your money to pay my bills. I want you to pay for my rent, my electricity, my internet bill, my cell phone bill. My whatever. I want you to pay for my bills. I don't think that's ever been a point of emphasis I've ever used in my few years here on this platform um, and a couple years now doing it full time. I What I have used is phrasings like, if you would like to support me, you could do so through Patreon, through donations, through Super Chats. Uh, if you would like to help alleviate some of my costs for E3 this year, you can do so through the Streamlabs donation link down in the description. But here's the thing, you don't have to give anything. There's no pressure. My coverage isn't going to change because you gave me more money. My coverage isn't going to get better because you give me more money. All you are doing is alleviating some of the costs for me to go to an event to create videos for this channel that you might enjoy. It's basically to me like when you go support on Patreon. When you go support on Patreon, all you are doing is saying, look, I value your content. I want to give you a little bit of money in, you know, in exchange for you making that content. And in return, all I expect for you to do is to continue to make content. 
And that's what our Patreon's for. Our Patreon is nothing more than, hey, look, we want you to spend more time making content. Ergo, we want to give you money to ensure that you can continue to spend time making content. That's really all the Patreon's for. There's stretch goals and there's all this stuff and little perks and benefits. But honestly, the overall Patreon is just there as a way to basically give me an extra paycheck to afford me not to have to work so much at other jobs and spend more time making content. It's just a direct support of the overall thing I do here. Just like if you do decide to donate to our E3 cause, it's not really even a cause, right? I would almost rather you take your money and give it to Beat'em Up's charity stream tomorrow because I don't need your money. Let me make that very clear. I don't need money. But I obviously would appreciate if people do want to support because it does make things easier for me. Now, because I have brought up things like my children and my fiance and stuff in the past, I need to make this clear as well. No one in this household is suffering because of me. My children are not suffering or left wanting. Heck, um, this past weekend, we actually went to the Wisconsin Dells on a three-day vacation in Kalahari. And let me tell you, that three-day vacation in Kalahari costed me way the hell more than this trip to E3 does. I just want to make this like really clear. People think my priorities are messed up. We had a family vacation for the first time in three years. We spent three years saving up for that family vacation. And my kids, well, it was a little stressful for me. But my kids had an absolute blast. And all that stress was worth it for them. All the money spent was worth it for them. And I never at any point made a video, a stream, or a mention that I wanted anyone to give a cent to pay for that vacation. I budgeted for that vacation, save for it, and we ultimately went. Now you might say, why can't you budget and just save for E3? The thing with E3 is it is a business expense for me. When I go to file my taxes at the end of the year and I'm filing the taxes for Nintendo Prime, there's a bunch of different things that I do um, as you know, a sole proprietorship, but essentially it all breaks down into the fact that I can write this off as a business expense. My entire trip to E3, however much I spend on food while I'm there, on transportation, on flights, on hotel, on the ticket to get into E3, whatever I spend is all considered a business expense. So it counts as a tax write-off, which means I pay less taxes on my income. So what ends up happening is if I didn't go to E3, and I didn't spend that money on other things related to the business, right? I took my family on vacation, as some people have suggested I do. Well, you know what ends up happening? I still got to pay all that money in taxes at the, at the end of the year or really quarterly back to the federal government and my state government. And instead, I decide instead of just handing the government, you know, four or five grand every single year out of my business... I'd rather reinvest that money back into the business. This is how a lot of top end businesses, more so like the really high up businesses, avoid a lot of pay, a lot of taxes. They avoid taxes by reinvesting their profits back into the company, even if it feels like those reinvestments back into the company aren't turning bigger profits. And that is something to talk about as well here. Some people have brought up how I shouldn't go to E3 because investing that money into going to E3 uh, is not a smart investment. If I was going to spend that money on something for the channel, then I should buy maybe new equipment, maybe get a second camera, maybe get some new lenses, maybe get some new lights, maybe get a lav mic that doesn't sound like crap. I don't even know what this sounds like right now. I have a backup microphone um, recording. it. Maybe I should buy extra sets of microphones. Uh, maybe I should consider is a zillion other things upgrading the editing computer which is under consideration for this year finish building the stage for the one uh in the other uh, room that i want to build uh i you know that's obviously something on the back burner but that's something i could invest in uh reality is i could reinvest that money in a way to make it uh uh, I, I guess a smarter purchase for some people where you might not even notice because there's not like a lump sum purchase of, you know, $2,000, $3,000 on something. It's just a bunch of money spent over time, right? And some people might think that's a smarter way to invest the money. And that is your opinion and your choice. Here's what I know about me attending E3. Here, here's the content I cannot make if I don't go to E3. One, I cannot make daily vlogs that take you guys who unfortunately might not be able to attend E3 inside E3. So I basically take you from the moment I leave and get all my stuff packed to the flight, to the hotel, to picking up badges, to actually attending E3 every single day. We go through that. You also get to meet a bunch of people in those vlogs that you wouldn't otherwise get to meet. We have Bob Wolf in, our, in a vlog last year. We had Super Metal Dave in a vlog last year. We had Nintendo Kate in a vlog last year. We had Game Over Jesse and Daniel in a vlog last year. And who knows who's going to end up in 
vlogs this year. What's really cool about the vlogs is it gets to take you to, hey, look, if you went to E3, you too would get to meet all these people if you if you happen to bump into them. And I don't go seeking them out. I don't plan to meet with those people. They're just people that I bumped into. And that's a really neat part of the E3 experience. And I like bringing what I possibly can from that experience to you guys. And I can't do that if I'm just sitting at home in my office chair, just covering the, the E3 like I cover a Nintendo Direct. And to be fair, we don't really get a boost in viewership due to Nintendo Directs. Uh, and when I covered E3 normally, uh, not last year, but the year before, just from my house, we didn't see a boost in viewership. Because lo and behold, we weren't providing any content that people weren't already getting by just watching Nintendo's live stream. So that's, uh, it, it, it's kind of a frustrating part there when people talk about the content itself, right? Now, the other kind of content you get besides the vlogs and taking you inside E3 is obviously hands-on impressions. Those are the videos I maybe enjoy making the most because it involves I actually played a game or Eric played a game or we both got to play a game and we get to have a discussion about our time with that game. And those discussions are literally impossible to have without going hands-on with games. In fact, they were so amazing and performed so well last year in E3 that there was a lot of talks about how can we continue to have hands-on impressions with games before they come out. Some people suggested we start traveling to like PAX East and PAX West or the Nintendo New York store. Or we had people being like, how can we get review copies of games in so we can get your early impressions of stuff? It became a big talking point last year that ultimately didn't go where we wanted it to go. But maybe this year, off of E3, maybe we start to do hands-on impressions anyways. Like, if we don't review every game, at least we can get out, you know, an impression and video about it, right? Something like that. So, who knows? But all I know is the hands-on impressions is something that, sure, there'll be other people doing it. You'll have other fans that are there, other gamers that are there that might make an impression video about this game or that game. But we make an impression video about basically everything that's in Nintendo's booth. Uh, what's also really cool is there is networking opportunities, of course. I didn't take a huge advantage of those networking opportunities the two times I've been to E3, but there are networking opportunities where you can meet different people and meet PR people. Uh, we actually got a contact inside Activision last year uh, because we directly attended E3, and he happened to be staying at the same hotel we were. Uh, so we got to chit-chat with him, exchange uh, details, business cards, all that stuff. And that's, that's something that just happens at E3 because um, it's just a big event. It can happen at PAX. It can happen anywhere, but E3 just happens to be the event we're at. I live in Wisconsin, so there's like zero events to network uh, here with anyone. Yes, I know about several Wisconsin creators, but this is Wisconsin, so we're spread all over the state and live nowhere near each other, so things never happen between us, right? Like, it's just, we all live in our own little worlds out here in the middle of the country. Uh, that being said, I just want to make this very clear that, like, those are just two kinds of videos. The other kind of videos that performed well for us last year were gameplay. Like, we had gameplay videos of Smash, gameplay videos of Pokemon Let's Go, very little bits. We kind of had to sneak a little footage in there because they didn't really want footage recorded for some reason. They literally were showing the game off in Treehouse, so why they didn't want footage it was beyond me. Uh, but whatever, they didn't want footage, but we got, a, we got you know, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute of it. Uh, we got footage of FIFA 19, which they didn't want us to record footage of. Uh, but to be fair, one of their reps actually said, look, why don't you record footage of it? It's fine. I'll just turn my back. So they actually encouraged us to do it because they didn't understand why EA is like, oh, hush, hush. You can't, like, you could play FIFA for, for Switch, but you can't actually record FIFA for Switch. Like, why? That made no sense. Uh, and, and just a lot of things like that. So we got a lot of footage of a lot of different games from Killer Queen Black, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Our Starlink Battle for Atlas impression video exploded, as did our gameplay clips of it because of Star Fox and all that. So bottom line is that all this coverage I'm talking about is stuff I can't do from my home. Here's what I can do from my home, all right? I could still live stream react to all of the media events which I do as well when I'm there so that's not a piece of content that's lost when I go there but what else can I do from home I can still make news recap videos prime news which I plan to do when I'm there as well this year but whatever I can do that from home uh, and I can have a podcast which we're going to do there and I could also have discussion videos on what I think about various games, and then obviously live streams. We do daily live streams at E3 as well, but we do live stream discussions about all the stuff happening at E3. All of that could still happen when I'm there, in addition to all the other videos I get to make because I'm there. Now, in terms of investments, because 
And we touched a little bit on investing or getting a business loan, investing money into E3. The thing is, I'm not looking to profit really off of E3, right? Like, I'm going to lose money going to E3. I lose money going to E3 every year. I paid 100% out of pocket back in 2016. Uh, last year, we had a bunch of fan support. Uh, we didn't go in 2017. 2018, we went all because of you guys, but I still dished out an additional $1,000 out of pocket. And this year, I'm going to be dishing out you know, probably thousands out of pocket yet again to go, regardless of your support or the business loan or any of that. And the reason that we do this is because we think... We suppose, we hope that long haul, a decade from now, 20 years down the road, that we're building towards something, that we are building the foundation blocks, that we are investing all of this money and time and hardship and nights of no sleep and flights where my knees are killing me because I don't do well with flights and all this stuff, that all this pain and agony and, and exhaustion and, oh my gosh, just outright being completely worn out. I almost need a vacation from E3 when E3 is over. All of it will be worthwhile because we're building towards something. And you know what? Even if viewership doesn't increase, subscribers don't increase, this channel bombs, and 10 years from now Nintendo Prime no longer exists, I'll never look back on these trips to E3 as a waste of time or a waste of money because... One thing that gets forgotten at these channels as money gets involved and we start talking about doing them for a living and how it's a job and all that stuff, what gets lost in all of that is why we make these videos in the first place. I'm a YouTuber making content about Nintendo and you know some other games going on in the industry, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever, because I'm passionate about making that content because I enjoy making that content because it completes me in a way that other parts of my life don't. It makes me feel proud of myself. It makes me feel like I'm personally building towards something instead of building something up for somebody else, which is what happened at my last gig. So I want to make this very clear that regardless of if this ever turns into a good return on investment money-wise, you know, a decade down the road, what it does make a good investment for me is on my own personal happiness and on my own personal vision for this channel. I have a lot of ambition for what I want this channel to become. And attending E3 is really just the beginning. Um, there's actually a roadmap I have down where we attend PAX East and PAX West, where we attend New York Comic Con. And potentially, this is the more iffy one, going to Gamescom out in Germany. And possibly the Tokyo Game Show someday. We'll see. Um, that one's a little more tricky because um, I have to hire a translator um, because there's still English-speaking stuff happening at Gamescom. At, uh, in Tokyo, I actually have to hire like a personal translator to be around me all the time and tell me what signs say and what people are, you know, what people are saying because I, I'm probably not going to learn Japanese. If I haven't learned it at this point, I'm probably not going to learn it now. But um, so basically, that's where I kind of want to leave this video. There's a lot I could talk about at this channel. There's a lot I could say, and I'm not going to sit here and defend and act like, oh, you know, Nate's such an e-beggar and this and that. Like, what, I, what do you want me to say? Um, people, if you believe in my content and you want to support it, we have a Patreon. We have a donation link. If you don't believe in my content and don't want to support it, I'll be just fine. My kids will be just fine. My family will be just fine. Everyone's going to be just fine. My family has always come first, and they've always been well provided for. I think the biggest thing I need to do moving forward is I need to depersonalize my channel a bit. And I know some people aren't going to like that because some of you are here for that personal touch. But I honestly think that for my own sanity, I might have to do that. Uh, where I can't talk about my, my fiancé anymore. Uh, I can't talk about my kids. have to try really hard to make sure my kids and my fiancé don't appear in any videos moving forward, which means, yes, Prime Family is probably going to have to be dead. Um, there's just people that make like videos about my fiance and my kids that just disgust me. And I, I, I don't want, I don't want my kids growing up to find this stuff and just having to go through whatever mental hurdles there might be to understand why someone would say these things about their father or say these things about their mother or say these things about them. Um, there's just some nastiness out there. So I need to do a better job protecting them and just keep them away from the channel disassociate them from the channel and do better trying to keep this channel more professional. 
Um, if there's one thing I could say about, about channels like Spawn Wave or other channels out there that I respect is they do a better job of keeping things professional, keeping it about the work. If I, I was all happy when I made that stream the other day, not because I was going to tell people if they want to support, you know, my trip to E3, they can do it, but because I was announcing I was going to E3. I was also announcing that I was going to keep being a full-time YouTuber for like almost the rest of this year, maybe even longer. I was excited to announce these things, but it got marred in this idea that I'm asking people for $2,000 to send me on a vacation when, man, if I was just going to go on a vacation, I would take that two grand and take my fiance and go on a cruise. Forget going to E3. E3 is not fun for me. I'm sorry to say, I'm not going to say there's not enjoyable aspects of it, but in general, E3 is not fun. It's a lot of stress because it's a work trip, and I treat it like a work trip because that's why I'm there. I am there to cover games. I am not there to just have a good time. Maybe someday I will go to E3 to have a good time when I no longer run a YouTube channel and, and or when I'm so big I can hire people to cover E3 for me so I can sit back and enjoy the event instead of... Um, planning out routes to hit the best uh, the best possible booths and the best games or like oh I know there's a five hour wait for Pokemon every day so we don't go to Pokemon day one but day two we plan to be at E3 oh I don't know four hours early so we can be first in line so we don't have to wait five hours to play the game or if we're like oh if we have gamer passes and we're only being let in at the exact same time uh, as media on the final day, well, then we got a plan to be there even earlier than media members get there on the final day so we can get Pokemon in. And, and there's just all this stuff that you have to plan out, all this stress, all the lack of sleep. Um, you eat lots of junky food because you don't got time to cook or deal with any of that. doesn't matter. You're burning so many calories. And plus, I try to get workouts in. And I, oh, man, my mind is just swimming in how much stress this trip's going to be. But ultimately, I'm going to be so proud of what, the, what comes out of this, because we're gonna have some of the best content this channel's ever had. I'm hoping to improve on our E3 content year over year. And ultimately, I do this all for myself, and I do it all for you guys. So whether you wanna support me or not, it doesn't matter. This content's coming either way. And I do wanna thank everyone who has supported me in the past, who might support me in the future, all of our current patrons, because our patrons, more than anything, are what enable me to spend so much time making videos as I do. Um, as I said, I do now technically have a second job uh, it's just part-time. I'm not going to dive too deep into it because you guys don't need to know about it. It's none of your business. Um, and I think that's my own fault for making my life everyone's business. So I promise from this video moving forward, I'm going to try to create a bigger disconnect between Nate and his life and Nate, the Nintendo Prime YouTuber. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next episode of Prime Answers, which should be landing uh, tonight.